Well, I was born in, in Fort Worth at 1224 East Anna Street. That was September the 9th, 1920. And I grew up in Fort Worth. I attended the only school that we the blacks could attend in Fort Worth is I.M. Terrell High School. And I finished that in 1937. And then I went to Prairie View, gained the only state black college we could attend. And uh, I went there and studied history and government. And uh, then I finished there in 41. Came back, couldn't find a job, so I decided if I got a master's degree, I might do a little better. And then I went back to Prairie View, and, and then in '42, the war started, and that's when I joined the made a mistake and volunteered for the Coast Guard. <laughs> when I got, I didn't want to go to the Army. I get my draft papers, and I said, uh, uh-uh. all the discrimination down in Mississippi and Alabama was that black, you know. So a, a recruiter came from the Coast Guard, a, and he said, this is the first time the Coast Guard was going to take in blacks as apprentice seamen, not cooks and maids and that kind of stuff, you know. It was apprentice seamen. And then they were going to send us to Manhattan Beach, New York, but I'd never been out of Texas in my life. <laughs> I couldn't even go to Dallas, man. We were so poor. Uh, and uh, they, I thought that would be good. But I know later on I made several mistakes. I also thought, I said, well, you know, if I join the Coast Guard, I'll, we are just be guarding the coast of the United States. I was wrong. In time of war, the Coast Guard was part of the Navy. And that's why I ended up in Saipan, Tenia, Lady Luzon, and Okinawa on D-Day. That's why I said, hey, wake up, buddy. It's time for us to wake up. Why are you going to sell well? Uh, you know, on the plantation with Democrats who don't even care about all they want is your vote, but they won't give you that. And, and so, where well, there you ain't. I farmed what you call the Frederick Douglass Republicans of Tarrant County, right here in this house, too, man. Boy, I had so many people. <laughs> oh, don't start me on that one. We, we, <laughs> this, this house was full that day, but we went downtown and had another. And said, you know, franchise, a millionaire wife. Franchise was top girl, and boy, she came down there. And we had, I had organized a Frederick of the Republic in town, and we kept growing. Had a meeting here for the state black Republicans. They hadn't been doing anything. Man, they elected me the president of the black state. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, uh, you don't know me, but I, I don't bite my tongue too much, man. I take on the establishment. I don't have to. Now, now I, I, I told your boy about, uh, see, I'm the first black ever at, hired at UTA. Remember that? Were you here then? I was the first black professor at the University of Texas Arlington out there in 69. Okay? Uh, and uh, that's another story, long story. But I broke down the rebel flags and all that crap. Hey, yes, sir. Got it going. Now, and here, here I go again by Bill McDonald. Read I, I, if you haven't seen my in all my books, it's about it. I start off with Bill McDonald. And read I do that, here's a black millionaire down on 9th and Jones Street. You know what's down? It's just down down there. 9th and Jones Street, and <laughs> he said, if blacks want their own business, you set it up. If you want your own newspaper, you set it up. Don't go around with your head in your hand, what you gonna give us? And I stayed with that for years, buddy. I've been, of course, I said, I was, my master's thesis on the Black Chamber of Commerce in Texas. That's, yeah, I, I know, and, and all I tell blacks all of I say, start your own business. You didn't worry about no discrimination then.